we're pretty good here. We can get started. If you would um, introduce yourself, your current position, describe what you do, and tell things people that wouldn't know about your job. My name is Nick Allard. I am the morning meteorologist at Cairo 7. Um, I am not originally from Yelm, Washington, but moved there when I was, what, eight or nine. Uh, I've been in TV news now for 17 years this summer, which is crazy. It means I'm old. And uh, yeah, I put together the forecast on my own daily, Monday through Friday. We're on the air from 4.30 to 7, then every half an hour through, what, 9, and then we're on again from 12 to 1. And I just, I just finished, got a cup of coffee, and I'm here right now. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, what do you um, think people wouldn't know about your job, though? I think people assume a couple of things. One, that I'm just reading off a teleprompter, which I'm not. I, I don't read anything. I mean, I can read news stories off the prompter. And if my anchors happen to die mid-show, which has happened, not die, but one got sick once on a weekend. So I had to take over and read for a while until we got somebody else in there. Uh, but I, yeah, I don't read a teleprompter. And two, I do the forecast all myself. So I, you know, I did go to Washington State University for a journalism or communication degree. But I also went to Mississippi State after the fact while I was working in TV and became a meteorologist, too. So I do everything myself. I don't have a producer. I put it all together myself. And yes, I do my own makeup. <laughs> oh, my. You have to wear makeup? <laughs> I'm covered in it right now. Are you kidding? It's pretty simple, though. We have one station in the group. It's in Atlanta. Uh, they have people that put, put it on for them daily, you know, like a hair and makeup person. We yeah. don't. I've never been at a place in all my years uh, where anybody does that, you have to do it yourself always. And it's pretty low tech. Wow. That's, am that's amazing. I wouldn't have never thought that you had to wear makeup. Oh yeah. It'd be so shiny and pale. And I mean, this thing's already, this thing already has troubles, but then if you don't have makeup on it, it's horrendous. That's funny. So, um, what are important skills and training that you would need to enter your career field? Uh, if you are specifically interested in TV, I really liked what I did. When I was a junior, I think I, I didn't know where I wanted to go. I just knew what I wanted to do. I'm talking about a junior in high school. I finally figured out that Wazoo, Washington State University, has an excellent communication program. So for me, being in TV, some people, if they want to just do weather, they just go to school to study meteorology. Like at the UW, there are a lot of people there that have gone straight from the UW meteorology program and then at some point made their way into television. I thought it was important because I didn't quite know what kind of TV I wanted to do to learn sort of the basics. So I went to Wazoo and got the split emphasis degree in broadcast news and broadcast production, meaning you could run the cameras and direct the show and produce it from behind the scenes. And you could also be in front of the camera, which involves not only just learning how to speak and be on camera, but uh, you know, just journalism, ethics, communication, law, all that kind of stuff. For me, I thought that was better because typically if you're going to go on TV, you don't usually get a straight meteorologist position. You usually go to a small market and you are a reporter, uh, which is what I did in, in the Tri-Cities. I was at uh, KVEW, KVU in, in Kennewick where you're a one-man band, you're shooting, you're editing, you're doing everything yourself, and it's insanity. Um, eventually, I had the chance to transition into weather, and that's when I went and got my meteorology degree. So I guess my point is, I think if you want to do what I do, I think it's important to understand everything about TV, whether it's how you do it, whether it's how to write, especially how to write, uh, or if it's just the, the things you're allowed to do. Like, for example, if you're shooting a, a, if you have your camera and you're taking video of somebody's house, where can you stand? Because legally, if you go on their property, you can't go there. Legally, if you're on the sidewalk, you can stand there all day and take video as long as you don't zoom in past what the naked eye can see. There are all these little things you sort of have to learn uh, that ethically will haunt you if you don't know. But, you know, if it's not necessarily journalism you want, you know, meteorology was, was tricky. <laughs> There's a lot of science involved. A lot of math involved, way more than I ever thought I'd ever have to do. So it kind of just depends on which angle you want to take. If it's specifically TV, I would check out Wazoo and just see what it has to offer. What grade okay. are we talking about here, by the way? Um, we have invited all of Yelm High School, so oh, wow. it should be ninth through 12th grade. I also put an invite out to my photojournalism class, Ooh. and so I have some seniors in there as well. 
So not quite sure who's here. I haven't list, looked at all the names, but we should have a variety of students with us today. Photojournalism class. I wish there would have been something like that when we were there. Well, yeah. wasn't there a, was there a newspaper or something like that or a newsletter maybe? But it's your, your book, I think. It is that all? Well, yeah. Yeah. I don't think we had anything else. I wish there would have been something like that. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, Yelm has a lot of CTE classes, which is career technical education classes here mm -hmm. to offer for all the students. So wow. um, with that being said, knowing all of the things that you just talked about going into your position is not just knowing um, the meteorologist part, but is to know all about the TV. So we have a stagecraft mm -hmm. class here. Um, we have obviously the science and the math classes here as well. So I believe that if a student is looking into wanting to go into TV, that those mm -hmm. would probably be the best classes to enroll yeah, in here. I think so. And you know, if you can, it, it might give you a running start. Like when, if you've got, if you're going to Wazoo, for example, something like that might give you a running start. I, I didn't know anything. I think when I left school. I knew I wanted to be in TV. I knew probably sports at the time, which I think a lot of you know young males want at you know when they're thinking about what they're going to go into. But that's yeah. all I knew. And so I had when I got to Wazoo, I just dove in head first because it has uh, a campus TV station that the students run that you can work for. You don't get paid, but you can do all sorts of stuff. And I just kind of just went head first and learned everything. And I wish at the time it would have been easier if I had a little bit of background, but. Since I didn't, we just didn't have anything around in Yelm at the time. Um, it, it was a little trickier, but you learn quickly. So I would say just if that sort of career is what you're looking for, learn everything. Because for me, it was fun. It took me out of the classroom where, sure, I can remember what kind of rock that is. And sure, I learned about Mesopotamia and all that kind of stuff. And I'm not doubting that that is valuable. But what I'm saying is once I learned everything about TV, it just it like clicked in my head because it was hands-on for me and I learned so much better in a hands-on fashion. And if you mm -hmm. find yourself doing okay in school, but you know you're smart and it's not making sense, there may be different ways you can find to help yourself learn. And for me, I wasn't a good test taker at the time. I, my grades my first year of, of, of school were horrible and when I was in high school. Um, it, once I could figure out a different way, especially for me being hands-on, it just sort of made it easier. So that's what I liked about TV is you, you you don't just sit there and read. You physically have to do something to learn. Okay. That's really good information. Um, so not sure if there's like school activities that maybe helped you get into Wazoo. So if we're talking about getting into admission for Wazoo, I know that it's a little bit different now than it was yeah. maybe when we were there. <laughs> I remember specifically what it was at the time. <clears throat> at the time, sorry, my allergies are bugging me. Uh, at the time, it was, I think, a 2.0, and that's it. There wasn't, <laughs> there wasn't much else for Wazoo. It's a lot different now. Unfortunately, I don't quite know what the requirements are, but I do know uh, the higher your grades can be, the better. The more extracurriculars you do, uh, and the more it shows that you're well-rounded, I know that's what they're looking for. Well-rounded is key. It wasn't like you just did uh, – Maybe you do one thing really well, and I get that because I, I was that way for a while. But if you can do a lot of things, even if it's just a, some volunteering outside of your comfort zone or if it's taking a class that's outside of your comfort zone that led to you experiencing some, something else. You know, For me at the time, it was photography. Maybe it's drama. Who knows? Um, I think the more well-rounded you can be, the better off you'll be, especially in TV because you kind of have to know everything. And if you don't uh, – <laughs> it will be a lot harder for you in more ways than I can, I can tell you. That's great advice. Um, <clears throat> what advice would you have given yourself in high school to prepare yourself for this career? I was just thinking about that the other day. Uh, not because of this, but I don't know why it popped into my head. I think, oh, I know why. Cause I was talking to my son. He was being shy about something. I said, you know, the last thing you need to be, is shy, not because he's my son or not because he's this or that, but because he's got a real boisterous personality. And I do too. I just figured it out too late. So if I wish, well, I don't want to wish that, but if I could have the personality and the confidence that I have now in high school, things would have been a lot different for me in a better way. 
because, you know, I was younger. I graduated high school at 17. So my freshman year, I was 13 turning 14. I was young. Um, and, you know, it, it, you can tell sometimes when you're around other kids that are older. So I guess what I'm trying to say is even if you feel like you're young, even if you feel like the other kids are bigger, stronger, faster, smarter, whatever, you don't need to let that make you feel different or make you feel, make you lack confidence because you're going to figure out later in life who you are. And I would recommend trying to figure that out now. Um, I, I, I don't know the better way to say it. I, I think I had a couple moments in high school where there were certain friends that did a couple of things and I realized that's just not the kind of person I want to be around. You have these little moments that don't click until later in life and trust me, I'm still figuring it out. But I would say, don't let things intimidate you. Just jump at them. If you, you just want to learn something, learn it. If you want to become more well-rounded, but you say, well, that's going to do it. Just do it. You know, throw yourself to the lions, as, it, as, as they say sometimes. I remember one time when I was a sophomore in college, um, we had a program at Wazoo that I don't know they have anymore, where at the time it was Fox Sports. Now it's Root, I think, that, and the Pac-12 network that covers Washington State games. So every football game, a lot of basketball, baseball games, the, the group that I was part of covered the games. And I started by just being the guy that ran behind the camera person holding this, this massive thing of cable, making sure you cable it in time and making sure that they don't fall and whatever. I mean, you were Seagal. You remember seeing those guys going up and down. You know, I was the one behind the camera. And okay. oh, was I not supposed to say that? Anyway. No, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't know. She was on the field sometimes, but anyhow, <laughs> what I was trying to say is at one point they gave me the chance to be promoted to running the camera that you see on TV. So from okay. 2000 to 2003, every single Washington State game that you saw on TV was me. I was one of the two cameras on the roof showing it. And oh, wow. the whole thing about being thrown to the Lions is my initiation or my uh, training was sitting there for one quarter and watching how he did it and say, okay, well, I'll see you later. Oh my God, I had no idea what I was doing. I had no clue, but I had to do it. And you sort of just let that anxiety melt away and you use it to help you figure out what you have to do. So I guess what I'm trying to say is a lot of things seem daunting, especially at this age. It doesn't feel right. It feels awkward or whatever else. Forget it. Just do it. Don't let it stop you because there are so many things that I could have done if I had figured this out a lot sooner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I you know, live that same way. Um, so I have a question here. Which mm -hmm. journalist or newscaster did you look up to and what can students be doing outside a classroom to, okay, so we kind of answered that to prepare for the career in TV and journalism. So what I was thinking was, is there any kind of like youth programs? I mean, I know Seattle's a little far away, but maybe there's like something in the summertime that they can get involved in that you maybe mm. you're aware of? I'm not yeah. sure. The reach. What I would do, hmm, that's a good question. I was going to say an internship, but you can't do an internship because legally if you do an internship, you're required to get something for it, whether it's, it's uh, academic credit for a college or be paid, and most stations don't want to pay. Um, you could do a job shadow. You could volunteer. You you know, I know, I think that, uh, I think Bates Technical College, like Clover Park, I think it still has a radio station. There may be some ways for you to job shadow. Um, you might be able to wrangle yourself into a TV station for a day, but the bigger the station, the harder it is to learn anything because they can't, they don't have a lot of time to show you. Um, gosh, for programs like that, I don't know what Yum has to offer. You could also, you know what I would challenge you to do? Hmm. Here's what I would do. I would, if you're really interested in this, the, the big key is writing. I mean, really writing revolves around everything you'll do, whether it's in front or behind of the camera. I would find a story that, that you're interested in daily and write it. So read the newspaper. And you're going to see how it, it, it has its style of writing. Now it's, you know, online. You could listen to broadcasts. And you can hear, like, the top story of how it's written. I would try to write it. But there are different ways you write. And you're going to learn what those are if you really want to as you head into college. Because newspapers, one way, in terms of, like, who you attribute things to is reverse. It's, it's an inverted pyramid, they call it. Uh, and TV is totally different. It's now. It's what's happening now. It's active. But I would maybe just try writing a story. And then maybe try writing it again the next day and then maybe to see how it goes. And if you're interested in that, practice reading it. And if you're interested in that, maybe find a way with your phone to put together a story about it. You know, you could 
get video clips of what the subject matter is, and then you could find a way to speak over it. You can really do little things to practice if you want to. Does the does the photojournalism class have um, like a like a newscast at all? Um, we used to do a newspaper. Yeah. Um, Could you? Do you? So it's mostly just about writing there. My particular class is about how you tell the story through photos. Ooh, I like that. Okay. That is exactly what you could do with video. You could do the exact same thing with video. Um, it doesn't matter if it's shaky or blurry or whatever, because you're just learning. But uh, you might find a way to practice telling a story, because telling a story is key. And being able to write clearly, actively, coherently, no mistakes, no spelling. I dare you to write a story and then read it backwards and see, oh, gosh, I spelled, misspelled things so many times. Because mm -hmm. you don't know it until you start doing it. Um, yeah. So find a way to practice that first, and then the technical side you can learn. Although I bet you a lot of your students are already way advanced in the technical side compared to where we were. Yeah. If we have some students here today that would love to keep learning from you beyond this webinar, um, I know you have some social media sites where you post mm -hmm. some really comical things. Are they allowed to follow those as well? Absolutely. Yeah, I don't really post anything that's inappropriate or anything, so dig in. Yeah, it's, um, what are they? Nick Allard, Cairo 7, I think on both Facebook and Twitter. I do have an Insta Instagram account. I call it the InstaFace. I haven't actually done much on that yet. I've, I'm becoming the old man. Like when I started, you didn't have any of this stuff. My space was just beginning. Now social oh, yeah. media is, ooh, that leads me to my next point. Social media is so everywhere that if you have stuff on your social media account that is in even any way like questionable or you sit and say, should I have that there? No, you shouldn't. Take it down. Don't put it up because I promise you, I don't think schools do it, although I have heard of some schools looking at social media accounts when it comes to the last possible thing for admission. For a job, they will look, and they will look back for a while. So, you know, <laughs> social media is a blessing and an extreme curse. I think it's a, it's a place where it's given people uh, a chance to make comments without any fear of retaliation. It, it also is a place where you can put stuff and not – you know, it can be funny. It can be this and that. And you're not worried about if it's going to make you look bad. In the long run, it will. So I would really start to think about that. Now, I was telling a lot of freshmen through seniors in college about that, and they were surprised. You guys have so many more years in front of you compared to that. So really be careful with it. It is, it is dangerous. Absolutely agree. Well, Nick, I have appreciated every little bit of time that we've had to talk. And sure. Great, great advice from you. I really appreciate it. So Yeah, uh, and honestly, if you guys ever have questions, uh, in all honesty, you can always email me. It's just N Allard. So my name is spelled A-L-L-A-R-D. So just N Allard at Cairo7.com. And that's K-I-R-O-7.com. Anytime you have questions about it, if you have questions about what to do in school, if you ever go down the line of making some stories and you want me to look at them, if you ever practice reading in front of the mirror and you're curious about this, anything. Whatever you want, if you have any questions, just email me and I'd be happy to, to help you out. Especially if you go down the line, I remember my very first time I emailed somebody in a bigger market, market being like Seattle's, what are we now, like market 12, New York and LA are one and two. When I started was market 122. I remember emailing somebody in Spokane, asking them to watch my tape for some advice and he never got back to me. So I've uh -huh. sort of always said, if anybody ever has something like that they want help on, I will happily take a look at it. It's, it's just the way you should do things. Oh, thank you.